Somebody's breaking in their new home, getting it how they want it. So what's up everybody? Staying here from Rocky Creek. Welcome back to the homestead. We're inside right now because Mother Nature is having a fit today. One minute it'll be sunshine and calm and then the next minute there's 40 mile an hour wind and blowing flurries to it's raining. It, it just cannot make up its mind today. So we are not going to do anything outside and Mrs. Rocky Creek and Madison are out of town visiting some of her family. So it is just boys weekend. Me and Griffin doing what we do. And Mrs. Rocky Creek might kill me. They left this morning and I 100% honestly did not plan to buy another animal. I promise. As hard as that might be to believe, I promise I did not plan to. Nonetheless, Griffin and I went to Rural King. It's about an hour away for us. I went to go look at different seed mixtures that they have for growing uh, foraging crops uh, to replenish some of the pig area, some other fields, things of that nature. Then I had a couple little items here there I needed to pick up, like some pine shavings and whatnot. Um, but I did not plan to buy anything in terms of an animal. But I did. I really did. Hopefully she won't be too mad. We'll find out. I will say this isn't completely out of nowhere for her because we have talked about getting this animal. We just didn't know it was going to be now. But also when we go outside, and I'm trying to limit outside just because of how bad the wind is. I don't know how audio will turn out. But I will also share with you whatever happened with cinnamon and baby bunnies. What came of that? I never talked about that last video because I talked about the piglets. I'll share with you what's going on with that too. I'll let you check out this new animal we got. But then also because the temperatures are all over the place and it's supposed to get down into the 20s tonight, uh, with the high winds, I need to get some extra straw put in for the pigs, particularly Big Mama, so she is good and comfortable tonight. So let's go get all that done. Let's show you this new animal, and yeah, let's roll. All right, guys, so first thing first, let's go over here to the rabbits, and let's talk about what's going on with Cinnamon's baby bunny situation. So guys, I got a little bit of bad news about Cinnamon's baby bunny situation. And that is that she did not have any baby bunnies. So I need to get this that box out. So she kind of made a nest. She didn't quite pull out as much fur as what I'm used to. So that kind of made me a little bit concerned that she wasn't going to be pregnant. Uh, but nonetheless, no baby bunnies. So let me get this box out and we'll talk about what I think either one of two issues is going to be. So guys, I think the issue with the bunnies is gonna be one of two things. Either number one, it just didn't take for whatever reason, which I don't believe that that's gonna be it because typically, so far I've only bred rabbits three times. And all three times I did the three fall off method where when the buck falls off three different times after he's mated the female, that increases your chances of having babies quite a bit. And thus far I've been 100% successful with that method. Uh, of course, I said, like I said, that's only been three times. Or Hermie is not able to have babies um, and that he might be the problem. And I'm leaning more towards that just because Holland Lops tend to be more of a, of a pet domesticated style rabbit, not as much for homesteading or farming or meat production. And we don't know anything about Hermie because like I said, we got him from our local animal shelter. And it is very possible that Hermie could be fixed for all we know. So my plan is going to be that I'm going to try Hermie again with probably Sweetie Belle. And if I don't have a successful birthing of rabbits again, then I'm going to say Hermie's the common denominator. Because our man Scotty here, he's never had a problem. And everyone so far has been successful using him. So, but we'll see. We're not going to be doing that anytime soon though, because we got too many other things going down the pipe, including what I added today. So we're just going to leave that be, and that'll be a later summer, late spring, early summer, maybe type project, just because Madison really enjoys seeing those baby bunnies. So enough of these guys. Uh, if you can't hear it already, the wind is howling. It's about 40 degrees outside, going to get down to 20. So I need to get some more bedding, 
and for the pigs so they'll have it tonight. So let's get that knocked out very quickly. Guys, Big Mama's been doing really, really good. She's been settling in great. Uh, she's really getting used to this house. And overall, she's been doing really well. Uh, it's really just now a waiting game and also just hoping for the best and that everything with a pregnancy is gonna go just fine. But time's gonna tell and we'll see how that goes. So guys, I still got some more work to do here in her pen. I did use an old baby camera that we had from when Madison was a baby. I was surprised we still had it, but it's been functional enough that it gives me a good idea of what she's doing in here. I can pick up about three quarters of the structure. I've gotten some of the crush rails put in, but I need to do more. And I also need to set up my corner where we're gonna run heat lamps to keep the pigs warm. So, but until then, she's got plenty of bedding that should keep her plenty warm and she should be just fine. But I need to go take another bell over to Mater and Olivia. What are you doing, big dog? So these two here are starting to get used to Big Mama to some degree. Uh, Maid in particular doesn't seem to be bothered by her whatsoever. Kind of just looks at her here or there. But Olivia, every once in a while, she does get some attitude towards Big Mama. She'll charge the fence. She'll like seem like she's trying to bite at her through the fence. So I'm curious to see how that may play out when they end up going together completely. I guess ladies are just a little more territorial. I'm not really sure but I'll be interested to see how that goes. But hopefully if everything goes right, I won't have to worry about that for quite a while because hopefully Big Mama's gonna have piglets and hopefully they'll be together until those piglets can be weaned and then I'll worry about it then. So enough of these guys now. They've got their straw, their house is plenty full. I forgot to record it, but nonetheless, let's go check out what we brought home today. There it is. Now, I originally only wanted one, but the Rural King required that we get two, but these are gonna be geese. Uh, we got two geese. I don't know if they're male or female. Time will tell in terms of that, so we're not really sure at this moment. But we just brought these guys home maybe an hour ago, two hours at most, and we're using our Rinnacoop uh, water right there, and that seems to have been working out really well for them. I may even raise it up quite a bit higher just because they're a lot taller and bigger than what I expected. And then we just have their food over here in this corner just to try to keep it from getting wet from the water. So guys, enough looking at them like this. Let me see if I can get one of them out so you can take a better look. And then we'll go inside where it's not windy and it's a little warmer. And we can talk about what our plans are and why we even got these. So guys, here's the goose. You see it right there. Hopefully you can see it pretty good. Um, they're pretty cute little fellas. I don't know if they're boys or girls. And honestly, I don't even know what breed they are. The The lady said that they were ordered in, um, but she didn't have the paperwork right then and that the people never came and picked them up the following day. But she believed they may be Toulouse. And so I took a chance because through the research of various geese breeds, I was leaning towards either a Toulouse or a Pilgrim. And so I'm really hoping these indeed are going to be Toulouse's. I wasn't really too concerned about whether we got a gosling or a goose. I really, I would prefer goose just because the females, I feel like, you know, obviously we can still get eggs while still getting some protection. Um, a gosling may be a little bit better at protecting, but I would prefer the females just so we could hopefully get the best of both worlds. But they are super cute and I think Madison will be excited when she comes back home and gets to see him. But I won't keep this guy out so long. I'm gonna go ahead and get him put back in so he can start getting warm. But we have never raised geese. This is a very new experience for us. So we'll see how it goes. All 
All right, guys, so we're back in the house. Let's talk about why did I get these geese. I have always been hesitant to get waterfowl, uh, being ducks and or geese. And the biggest reason for that is because a lot of people talk about how they're just generally messy. You know, many people say that they're a lot more messy than chickens. So I was pretty hesitant to, to get some of them. But after we had our hawk issue, you know, I started really exploring all different types of ways that we can try to combat that. And outside of enclosing our entire pen run area, which has turned out to not be very feasible for us just because of how big it is, I had to look into a plan B. Fortunately, for several weeks, we haven't had any more issues, but I wanna be prepared to reduce these chances in the future. And so I consistently was reading about guard geese. And something that I learned about guard geese was that you don't want to have more than two at most for that to be effective. So we have opted, I really only wanted to get one, but the store required me to get two as their minimum purchase amount. So we got the two. So I'm gonna do one of two things. Either number one, I will sell off the other one just to recruit the funds that I had in purchasing it. Or number two, we should be getting our batch of meat birds here in the next few weeks. So I'm thinking about, I may put one in with the egg laying hens and I may utilize the other one as a guard goose for the meat bird flock because those two batches of chickens are not generally raised anywhere close to each other to where I really even think they can even see each other. And so I'm thinking by having the one goose with each one will just increase our chances of protecting those various flocks. So raising geese is a completely new adventure for me. Um, I've been reading on it over the last about two months or so, researching different breeds, how to raise them, things of that nature, but any of you who have experience raising geese, please let me know. Based off of the goose that you saw, if you can even tell at all possible breed, let me know that as well. I would suspect that as they're growing, we should be able to tell for sure what breed they are, whether they're a Toulouse or not. Um, honestly, the only breeds that I'm hoping it's not going to be is one of the Chinese varieties, only because they, from all that I've read, they are uh, some of the loudest breeds that you can get. And although I know they're gonna be noisy to some degree, I really don't want to default to the loudest of the ones. So guys, it's just me and little man here right now. He's taking a nap right now, so that gave me a great opportunity to quickly bust this out. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of a few more things I need to get done here around the house before he wakes up since I'm on a time constraint. But I wanna share with you real quickly another new adventure here and update you on a few things. But guys, until we all get together next time, hope y'all are doing well. Y'all take care of yourselves. And we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes. Thanks, guys.